I believe that painting murals has been a significant impact in the community. Uh, even with me working on this mural currently, uh, it's crazy how many people go by and they just tell me like how much it's impacted the area and how like this area specifically needs things like this. And this isn't just this mural in general, this is all across the United States. Every time I come back to South Carolina, it seems like there's a new artwork going up. I was literally just driving down the street and I saw this mural and I was like, wow. Like artwork literally can bring a whole community to life in an average building that you would never look at. It really draws your eyes and it gives you that peak of inspiration. It really sparks your heart. We are in Charleston, South Carolina, and it is growing so fast. There is all kinds of construction going around, and I think this mural right here and other murals in the city is a great example of how artwork and public art can really beautify a city and a space. How this mural came about was a nonprofit called um, Just Be You reached out to me, and they wanted to create a public artwork piece that really exemplified um, the, so the social uprising. So I wanted to create a piece that spoke to that. Um, I call that Summer Freedom Summer. People call them riots. I think it was a lot of things and there's um, truths on both sides, but uh, my truth is here up on this wall and I really wanted it to resonate with people in the black community. I think that public art can be a tool um, in cities everywhere that unifies people and brings people together and helps people to understand the human experience that we all share. I believe that um, art is something that can really touch people and when people see that it's easy for them to connect to and I think there could be more love in the world you know once more people see the human in each other. The feedback from the community is always overwhelmingly positive and just people are so excited to see something new. People will go out and watch the process. You know, sometimes these murals take several weeks. And so it's always fun to watch the evolution. And people, are, you know, online start talking about them and kind of pondering, what does this mean? The city didn't actually realize that there was a need for public art murals. That kind of came organically from the community. So in about 2014 or 15, we started to see an increase in the number of applications for public art murals throughout the city. And one of the first came from Stone Academy, which is a local um, elementary school, and they, they kind of focus on the arts. From that was really born the Stone Avenue mural collection. So we've seen that particular corridor grow over the years, and now there are approximately 10 to 15 murals just on Stone Avenue alone. Community engagement is why I'm here, um, working with neighborhoods and working with, you know, either nonprofits or community centers or schools. Um, that's why I'm doing this. Um, it's that it's that connectivity. It's the connection. The uh, art that's behind me, living local legends. Um, so on one side of the mural is uh, Mary Duckett, who's a community activist uh, from the southern side neighborhood here, and on the other side is uh, Assistant Fire Chief Mack. Um, and uh, both of those individuals were present at the unveiling of the um, of the mural. Uh, we hosted a community paint day here where residents of the gallery on the surrounding neighborhood were invited to come and paint. Um, you had to be 10 years or older to paint on your own. If you were younger, we had chaperones to kind of help you do it. Um, and uh, you know, it was paint by numbers. And you came up to the table, you grabbed a cup that had a number on it. And number one, you went up to the wall, you found the number one, and you filled in that space. Adam Schremer is really an expert on this. He really involves all the community members, when he goes into a community, he will meet with the constituents, he'll meet with the neighborhood, and he just ensures that everyone is at the table and has input on what he's designing for their community. One of my favorite murals in the city was one that was installed in 2020 at the Canvas Building, which was a former office building downtown and it was renovated um, by the Beach Company out of Charleston as part of a larger mixed-use development. And they actually commissioned a, an Australian artist, Guido Van Helton, to do an eight-story black and white mural um, featuring educator Pearlie Harris. And he really involved the community in a, a number of ways. He came here, did his research, learned a little bit about the history of Greenville, Pearlie's impact on education and it's just really amazing. It's very inspiring to see the process itself is incredible. Artists have the responsibility of, you know, sharing their gift 
as well as letting people know what's going on in the times. What are people feeling socially, emotionally? Um, what's going on um, in the economy? And you know, you look back into history, you can pick an artist from each time period and you learn history through that. I do mur murals more for the community than myself. I love to do it, but I love seeing people's reactions when I do something this big and so bright. And they're not used to seeing this, especially in a community like this. And I'm used to seeing real, just deep, abstract art. You know, it's for my art itself. Um, universal is the main thing I have from art, so this piece is more of a universal piece, as in the meaning behind it. It's supposed to appeal to different genders, different um, age, um, even different um, ethnicity as well, because um, my piece for me, I want all my art to be more universal to everybody, to appeal to everybody out there. It's supposed to give off this illusion a white border is around it, and as you see, the art is flowing out the frame, so it's supposed to be an illusion as well. So that's something I'm trying to, this is my second time attempting something this big with this. My original piece like this is in Greenville, South Carolina. It's all green um, for Greenville. But for this piece, I wanted to use um, a lot of multicolors to bring more brightness to the alleyway, as well as people who walk by. Since it's kind of a hard location to see, the colors will automatically pop out to people so that it, won't, it won't be too hard for them to find it or see it from a far distance or anything. There's a special feeling, I think, in the South that we, we have a lot of stuff, a lot of baggage, but we have, you know, the beautiful, beautifully diverse culture. So I decided to um, make this as diverse as possible. And anytime I'm doing a piece, if I can use um, people I know, well, I like to take my own photography and um, put my own people in there. So this was an opportunity to use, you know, to bring a put a spotlight on a couple people and also to put some people I love in there and, and um, it's, it's been really wonderful. Right now I'm working on my grandfather. They retired him as a Brigadier General. He's actually the son of Emily Douglas who they named the park after and he became the Postmaster of Columbia, retired as Grand Billy, loved and adored by the entire community. As someone who's a muralist, amazing, shocking to have your face on the side of a building. It's something you don't necessarily expect because you're the one usually doing that kind of work. So for someone else to do it for you or do it kind of honoring you it is a really big gesture. I do believe this piece turns a lot of heads. Uh, McClellan chose to use some really bright colors, catches people's eyes. Uh, he's also chose to use different individuals um, he used me to start the whole thing off. I mean, hey, and I'm wearing a black hat. I'm looking like a superhero on the side of a wall, but also to everybody else who's on the wall looks like a superhero or someone who's contributed something to the community in some kind of way.